In this video, I'm going to show you four ways to calculate the Macaulay duration. We'll be using an example where the bond has a tenor of seven years, the coupon rate is 5% per year, but the bond is uh, semi-annually paid. The yield to maturity is 4.3% in annualized terms, and we'll be using a par value of 100. And we'll, from this, we'll calculate the bond's Macaulay duration at issuance. So the first method is to use the general formula where we will take the weighted time to receipt of the cash flows. So uh, here, just to uh, define the notations, okay, PMT here would be the coupon per period, okay, and R would be the market discount rate or the yield to maturity, N would be the time to maturity, the fraction, the lowercase t over the uppercase t is a fraction of period from the last coupon period to the settlement date. And FV here would be the face value. So the formula, the general formula for Macaulay duration can be further simplified okay, uh, into this form here where we will just take the time to the next uh, coupon payment. Okay, Like here we have 1, 2, up to N. This is from the previous coupon period. Okay, and then we multiply by the, coup uh, the coupon, the PMT or PMT plus the face value if it's at maturity. And then we'll discount them using the market discount rate for each respective period. And then we'll divide the whole thing by the full price of the bond. And then we'll minus the fractional period. To illustrate the general formula, we'll apply this to the example defined earlier. For, so for this 7 years bond, we will define it in terms of semi-annual periods. So if you take 7 times 2, that will be up to 14 semi-annual periods, okay, which means 7 years. And then for the coupons, for every period, that will be based on the coupon rate 5% times the par value. So 5% divided by 2 times 100, that will be 250 every 6 months. Okay, The yield to maturity will be divided by 2 as well okay, to get the yield per period, so 4% over 2 that will be 2.15%. So calculate the bond's Macaulay duration at issuance. So this is not between coupon payment dates. So the fractional period here will be equals to zero. So we'll list down all the cash flows uh, 250 every six months. And then in period 14, there will be the face value of 100 plus the coupon. So we'll take the cash flows and we'll discount it by, we'll divide by one plus the yield per period, which is 2.15%. Okay, to the power of the period from 1 to 14. Okay, so once you get the present value of the cash flows, you will sum it up and this will be the PV, the full price okay, of the bond. And then uh, we'll convert the PV of the cash flow into the weight. So for period 1, we'll take 2.447381, divide by the total PV, okay, which we obtained earlier, 104.192796. So we'll get the weight and we'll repeat it for all the periods. So as you can see, the final period, okay, with the face value will have the highest weight. So naturally, the Macaulay duration will be geared or, or it will be steered towards the last period. And then finally, we'll calculate, we'll take the weight and then multiply it by the time period. So in this case, we'll take, uh, for the first period, we'll take 0 0.023489 times 1. Okay, so that's 0 0.023489. For the last period, uh, we'll take 0 0.730380 times 14. So we'll get 10.22532. And if you sum up the total for this column, you will get 12.032451. Now, uh, this is in semi-annual periods, bear in mind. Okay, so if you want to convert it to annualized terms, to get the Macaulay duration, we will divide it by 2. So that gives us 6.0162 years. All right, so this is the Macaulay duration of this bond. The second method is to use the clause form formula for Macaulay duration. So that will be 1 plus R over R. Okay, and uh, this is, of course, the this is the Macaulay duration of a perpetuity. And then we'll minus uh, 1 plus R plus N times uh, C. This C here would be the coupon rate. This is the coupon rate per period okay minus the market discount rate and then we'll divide it by the coupon rate times one plus r to the power of n minus one and then we'll add r then we'll minus the fractional period from the last coupon 
period to the settlement date. So again, for the same uh, bond, okay, we will identify all these components. So for R, which is the market discount rate, but we will have to convert it into semi-annual terms. So that's 4.3% divided by 2, that's 2.15%. Uh, the coupon rate in this case would be 5%, okay, but in semi-annual terms, this would be divided by 2, that's 2.5%. N would be the number of semi-annual periods, uh, which is 7 times 2, so that's 14. So let's uh, substitute the values in. So uh, for this uh, fractional period T over T, that will be equal to 0, since this is at issuance. And uh, we'll get 12.032469 semi-annual periods. If you want to convert this into years, we will divide it by 2, so that gives us 6.016623 years. Uh, it will be, of course, a bit difficult to memorize the formula for most candidates. So this is not a recommended uh, method to calculate the Macaulay duration unless you are comfortable enough to memorize this uh, formula. And for the previous, um, previous method, which is the general formula, it's easy okay, to calculate the weight multiplied by the time period, but it can be quite tedious if the bond is of a long maturity or if there's many periods involved. So the calculation will be very, it will take a lot of time. So the third method is to approximate uh, using, uh, the, using this formula, which is to take the difference between the value of the bond when the yield declines and when the yield increases. Okay, so we can easily do this using the financial calculator. And this is a method that I would recommend. So once you calculate the modified duration using this approximation, then we will multiply it by 1 plus the market discount rate or the yield to maturity per period to get the Macaulay duration. So let's illustrate how that is done. So first of all, we'll be using the current, uh, uh, the current yield, which is 4.3%. So based on the current yield, 4.3%, we will calculate the present value of the bond. Okay, so let's do that using the calculator. So we have uh, 14 semi-annual periods. Okay, the yield is 4.3 divided by 2. So that's 2.15. Okay, and then uh, coupon is 2.5. And the uh, face value is uh, 100. So we compute the PV. Okay, which is 104.192797. Okay, and then uh, to make it easier, I will save, I will change this to a positive number. And I will click store two okay store two uh, I'll, I'll key i'll key this in into a, a way a systematic way to actually uh, fit to fit into this formula okay so I'll, I'll i'm purposely choosing two here store two right so that's uh for the initial value of the bond next uh, we are going to assume that the yield drops by a very very small amount so I'm going to assume that the yield decreases by one basis point to 4.29%. Okay, one basis point is 0.01%. Uh, so with the decline of one basis point in the yield, so when you divide it by two, the IY that you will key in to your calculator will now be 2.145. Okay, back to our calculator. So uh, if I take 4.29 divided by two, that's 2.145. So that is the IY in this case. I will click Compute PV, so the value of the bond will increase, and I'll change this to a positive number, and I'll save this as number 4. Now, for the last, um, the last uh, value to calculate would be, if the yield were to increase by one basis point to 4.31%, so now the IY that we'll key into the calculator will be 2.155. So that is 2.155 and compute value. So we get 104.131453. I'll convert this to a positive number and store this as number six. So I purposely choose the number two, four, and six here to imitate how the, the notations look uh, are fitted into the formula. So in this case, when we calculate the, when we approximate this modified duration, okay, all I need to do is just fit in according to the sequence of the numbers, four, six, and two. So what I'll do now is I'll just put bracket, open bracket, uh, recall 4, right, minus recall 6, close bracket, okay, that gives me the numerator, and then I will divide by open bracket 
2 times the initial PV, which is recall 2. Okay, and then we multiply by one basis points change on each side. So that in decimal place, that would be 0 0.0001. We are done. We'll close the bracket and what we get is 5.88961. One. This is the modified duration of the bond. Okay, this is not the Macaulay duration. We still have one more step to go, which is to multiply it okay, by, the, by 1 plus the yield to maturity per period, okay, which is 4.3% divided by 2. So that will give us the Macaulay duration of 6.01623. So just to verify the number, I'll multiply by 1.0215. That gives us 6.01623, yes. Okay, that's the Macaulay duration. And uh, this is an easy method to actually use uh, as you will be given the, the yield, the tenor, the coupon rate, and the par value. All you need to do is calculate the initial value, PV sub zero, and then you will need to sit, you will need to reduce the yield and increase the yield by the same uh, amount. So choose a very small number. Uh, you can, of course, I choose one basis point as the change here. You can take something smaller than that, okay, or something close to one basis points, okay, so that you will get a good approximation. And of course, that will give you uh, the, a very accurate value for the Macaulay duration. The last method would be to use the bond function in the financial calculator. So this is only specific to the professional version of Texas BA2 financial calculator. So now I'll switch over to the professional version. All right, and uh, we don't have to make much changes here, but I'll just set the decimal place to 9. Okay, and um, let's click second, 9, which is for the bond function. Okay, uh, the bond function requires a specific date to be entered, but this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we, can, we can circumvent through it. So the date, settlement date here is 31st uh, December 1990. So let's just take that as the issuance date. Okay, the coupon, you enter it in semi-annual terms. That's uh, 5, 5%, 5, 5 times uh, 100. So that will be $5. Okay, so enter. And then redemption date will be seven years from the settlement date. So I will add seven years here. So that will be 12 for December, 0.31 for days, and then plus uh, seven, uh, seven years. So that will be nine, seven. Okay, so that's 31st December, 1997, which is seven years from the settlement date. Okay, so this is to replicate, uh, to mimic the seven years maturity. Okay, the redemption value is 100 for the par value. Uh, we, are, we can use actual, actual or 30 over 360. It wouldn't affect the final answer. Okay, and it's a 2 over Y, which is for a semi-annual bond payment. If your calculator is showing 1 over Y, that's a, one, that's a annual payment. So change it to 2 over Y for this example. And then uh, we'll go over to yield. Yield is 4.3. Key, key in the annual yield. Okay, and then price okay, will be 104.192797. Okay, we obtained this earlier. Okay, this is the initial PV. And then if you scroll down further, accrued interest is zero because this is at issuance. So there will be no accrued interest. And finally, if you scroll down, you will see 5.889608. Okay, which is the modified duration. Okay, this is the modified duration of the bond. So if you want to convert this into Macaulay duration, all you need to do is multiply it by, multiply this by one plus the yield per period, which is 2.15%. So that gives you 6.01623. Yes. Right. So this is the these are the four ways of calculating Macaulay duration. Uh, of course, the last method here is only uh, available for the professional version. But uh, if you have it, it's convenient. If you get if you are asked to calculate uh, modified duration or Macaulay duration, but if you don't have the professional version, you only have the basic version. Uh, there is no need to, I mean, buy a professional version. You can easily approximate it using this formula, okay, which is very easy to remember as compared to uh, using the closed form formula or as compared to the general formula.